Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to another Kovacs Reacts. We are here. We're going to be reacting to another Purple Pineapple Television uh, YouTube video right here that he got going on. Yu-Gi-Oh! Monsters that I want to eat. <laughs> That's pretty funny. It was, as soon as I seen the title, I was like, yo, I got to react to this 100%. And it's pretty good. I ain't even going to lie. But yeah, man. Welcome to the corner. Appreciate you taking time to come through, check out the video and stuff. Hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below. Uh, if you want to support the channel, feel free to become a member. Every little bit helps, and I appreciate everybody and anybody who wants to give into that. But without further ado, we're pretty much going to be getting into this. Make sure all my shit's good to go so that we don't have an echo in the background. I know it happens every once in a while, it is what it is. But we are getting into it right about now. Purple Pineapple Television. Go check out uh, check out his channel, Yu-Gi-Oh! Monsters that I want to eat. A female Yu-Gi-Oh! Monster was going to be on this list. You can attention. Now that I've got your attention, if you thought that Dark Magician Girl or any female Yu-Gi-Oh! Monster was going to be on this list, you can go ahead and click off this video and make your way to the nearest. <laughs> make your way to church, man. It's the way... <laughs> church. Now that we've got 100% viewer retention, I went through all of the over 8,000 monsters in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! to find that there are 44 monsters that are some kind of food product. So, make sure that you go and check his channel out. Over 8,000 monsters that he had to look through in the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe in order to pick out some in order to cook and eat. And from coming from like a kitchen background, I'm like super curious about it. I want to see what it is that he's going to pick and what kind of dish he would want to make with it. And today I'll be going over which of those monsters I would eat in its entirety, provided they don't send me to the Shadow Realm. What am I considering a food Yu-Gi-Oh monster? At the risk of losing further viewer retention, I'm discounting any monster that can be turned into food. As much as I'd quite like to try seven colored sashimi, it will not be included in this discussion. <laughs> That will also include any animalistic monsters, so basically the entire beast monster type and just about every monster in the water attribute. I will only be taking monsterized versions of actual food items that you could have right now into consideration. So this essentially did So like, I'm pretty sure he's gonna end up picking like Mushroom Man or something too. Discounts the entire Madolce archetype, but for one exception that I've made, and it's the first entry of our list. Madolce Chocolates. I've decided that these are chicks made out of chocolate, despite their chocolate fuzzy chips. appearance. I don't typically have much of a sweet tooth, but something tells me that these sweet little babies are Yu-Gi-Oh's equivalent to the enchanted chocolates from the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy. I w That's funny. <laughs> if you guys have ever seen the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy, you, you know what he's talking about, and if you haven't, check it out. It was awesome. It used to be on Teletoon up here in Canada. Uh, psh, no idea what it is in the States, but it's it was a good show. Uh, I guess like Easter, chocolate Easter. We'll be I partaking in said sweets in the exact manner that Billy did. Mm. <laughs> Before we get into the rest of the list, let's cover a few dishonorable mentions of Yu-Gi-Oh! food monsters that taste best when thrown directly in the trash. Marshmallow, and by extension more Marshmallow, I imagine a marshmallow tastes exactly like a peep. Peeps are awful, especially the one that I eat every year at Easter. Pump King and Pump Princess have been eliminated from my ideal Yu-Gi-Oh diet. Being so like with Pump King and Pump Prince Punk Princess, you'd be able to do like a haunted pumpkin pie for Halloween. Is how I feel about that. That they are zombie types, I imagine that any bit of whatever a pumpkin is has decayed and rotted. The only and that's that's fine you know you could end up just baking it off and whatever turning it into a puree add a little bit of this a little bit of that make yourself pumpkin pie the sick i'm trying to be is when a pro snowboarder from an early 2000s playstation game calls out my trick landings ah tasty on to the list <laughs> if you don't like fruit i'm going to assume that you have bad credit i'm sitting around a mid 500 however i can convince myself that everything is okay and that my bills aren't overdue with a nice bowl of fruit you probably saw his better credit score than I did. <laughs> I felt that everything is okay and that my bills aren't overdue with a nice bowl of fruit. You probably saw a lot of these coming, but Naturia Strawberry, Naturia Cherries, Naturia Pineapple, and my newly discovered love of Fengli the Soldier Palm. The Naturia <laughs> monsters, I have no doubt, taste exactly like their real world counterparts, maybe with a little added guilt to spice things up. 
But Fangly, being a pineapple dragon, I would think tastes like a mix of pineapple and dragon fruit, which sounds delightful. Typically, a fruit bowl pairs here. quite nicely with breakfast, and nothing beats a nice egg for breakfast. Now, us commoners tend to stick with a standard chicken egg, maybe a duck egg if you're really feeling adventurous. Duck eggs are really, really good. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's better than a chicken egg. 100%, especially if it's farm-raised and you know where it's coming from. But what about a reptile egg? Specifically, Reptia egg. Some of you... <sighs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure in, like, Indonesia, they have fermented reptile eggs. Almost like down in Mexico, the way how they have uh, those chicken eggs that are, like, halfway fetuses and stuff like that that you can eat. It's considered a delicacy, but I'm not about it. You may be disturbed by the spotting and the ominous glowing aura that surrounds these scaly delicacies, but that's where the flavor is. Hop on board because we're taking this train straight to Flavortown. <laughs> I've envisioned this tasting like a pre-salted egg when prepared in a pan, or a more briny and cold-blooded balut. I like the way how he did the straight to Flavortown with Guy Fieri right there. <laughs> like a pre-salted egg when prepared in a pan, or a more briny and cold-blooded balut. Now that we've started our day with a well-balanced breakfast, I'm looking forward to a mid-morning snack. And my snack of choice would be something salty, like potato chips, and or something fruity and sweet, like candy. How about potato and chips, and jelly beans, man? Those would be my choices. Personally, I'm leaning more towards potato and chips, because they also... I would pick potato and chips over jelly beans any day, any day. And like, it all depends on the kind of chips that you that you wanna get, you know? Like, I like uh, the Mrs. Vicky's, like kettle chips, because they're crunchy. <laughs> I like that crunch. And once you, once you start eating it, you just can't stop eating it. I could go through a huge bag of chips, as long as they're the kettle cooked chips. I love them shits. Come with their own bags of potato chips, meaning I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck. I'm hesitant with Jerry Beans, man. He may not have the unmatched battle prowess of, say, Insect Knight, but with his true abilities still untested, I'm afraid that I will, in fact, become the mid-morning snack. Because the fight with Jerry Beans, man, took longer than expected, we're rolling right up on lunchtime, and I could go for a nice burger with a cold beverage. And know what else is kind of funny to think about? The way how uh, they had the Jelly Bean Man there. If you've seen the Rick and Morty episode, <laughs> the King Jelly Bean, <laughs> what he was trying to do to Morty, I don't trust jelly beans, bro. Not about it. I don't think there would be a single list just like this that would exclude Hungry Burger, the meal that bites you back. Challenge accepted. The only thing this burger is missing is some onions and maybe bacon. Unfortunately, there's no Naturia onion. It's the layers no of the don't either. go that deep. <gasps> and the best cold <laughs> drink to pair with a hot off the grill burger, aside from a pop, would be a slushy. Just so fitting that this is the monster's actual name. Based on Slushy's Slushy. effect, it sounds like we get free refills from whatever convenience store, gas station, or bodega procures this refreshing beverage. Never. So, like, yo, a hungry burger here, I feel you'd be able to get around it trying to bite you back by cutting it in half right down the middle in front of its teeth. How is it going to bite you? You know? And then you just eat it from the back. That's what she said. Oh! Never <laughs> again will I be thirsty. And before dinner time hits, I like to get in a light snack. Something fresh that gets my appetite going for a hearty dinner, and salad is usually my go-to. This isn't your standard salad though, mainly because there's no head of lettuce or cabbage monsters, but we can say it's fancy. Sylvan Peacekeeper, Cherry in Motto, Bean Soldier, and the World Carrot Weight Champion. So back in the day, when I used to play uh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh game for PlayStation 1, this was one of the strongest monsters ever. And he was also able to make, man, who was it? I can't even think of the name right now. I'm spacing hard right now. Jesus. Flame Swordsman. He was, he was material for a Flame Swordsman. Salad is so fancy, it doesn't even come with dressing. What a shame. I could reasonably take all but one of those monsters in a one-on-one -on -one fight to add to my salad, but Carrot Weight over here isn't gonna go quietly. Gonna have to bite faster than he can punch me. I think that's a Mike Tyson quote or something. I broke my back. And we finally made it to dinner time and I can already hear the bell ringing. We've had a long day fighting monsters to eat instead of just going to the grocery store, but damn it, I say it was worth every ounce of sweat. This time around though, our time-honored dinner of meat and potatoes has been pre-prepared for us. Mild turkey and mystic potato, the kind of meal that really gets you going for the next day. Ignore the mischievous face on your potatoes, folks. That's clearly the way they were intended to look. 
I feel that that face, like it could look at you like that and just cover it in gravy, man. And just mush mush it. <laughs> And of course, we can't end the day without dessert. We've done pretty good sticking to our diet of only the freshest and most essential Yu-Gi-Oh monsters, but it's time to treat ourselves to a handful of Marsh macarons. No, it's not a peep like the other two. This is fine cuisine. I don't know if anyone else would get this, but this monster reminds me of the Scrab Cakes from the Oddworld series, which is to this day a fictional food item that I want to try most. And we made some good Scrab Cakes, too. But that's going to wrap up today's dietary suggestions. Let me know your thoughts. What Yu-Gi-Oh monsters will you be adding to your daily regimen? Drop a comment down below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, as always, guys. And until next time, this has been Purple Pineapple TV. Signing up. It's a huge shout out to uh, Purple Pineapple TV. That was that was pretty good, man. That was pretty good. At the end here, I'd eat I'd gobble that turkey up. <laughs> Pun intended. And then the macaroon. Obviously, macaroons are better than peeps. It got that little bit of a crispness to it. Not only that, but like they are kind of like a delicacy in France and stuff like that. Paris. I know a lot of people want to like travel around the world and try macaroons and stuff from around the world. It's pretty crazy to think about. But overall, let me know what you guys thought too down in the down in the comments there. Feel free to hit me up on any one of my other social media platforms down in the description below. And yeah, for this one, we're pretty much calling it there. I I like his list so far, even though. I would add a fish to it and like ghost beef. You gotta recognize, man. I'm eating the shit out of that, bro. Love it. Cut them up into a nice steak. You, you end up going to have food for like six months. Easy. If you were to butcher it yourself. But anyway, yeah. Go call there. Have yourselves a fantastic day. And until next time, guys. Peace.